All that remains. Meet Tilda upstairs. All right. Anything to find before we do that? Actually, can we, if we open the map, like, where are we? Huh. So we're just like, this is the, this is the big base and we're just over here. Interesting. I mean, we can see a little compound here. Interesting. I mean, I've been, I've been very close to here. I've been right there. Hmm. Most curious. Okay, so why would Tilda be helping us? Maybe because we're Elizabeth and she and Elizabeth had some kind of relationship going on. It didn't seem like particularly friendly from what I remember, but maybe that was just like at the end of it and she regrets what happened or... Survival bunker. What are these tubes? Could you not have fucking intervened before Val died? Fuck's sake, man. Just a few favorites from my collection. Rescued and stored here just before I went off world. Huh. Take a look, if you like. Oh, I like. I'm curious to hear your impressions. Is this gonna be... Veda and Gaia are gone, and you want me to look at old paintings? Don't be so quick to dismiss the comfort we can find in art. Or the insight we might gain. Examine the art. Optional. <laughs> is this, uh, is this the place Beta saw? Like, you know, she had those, like, visions or whatever. Not visions, like... It was like a door in her thingy. My favorite pairing on the left is... Woman reading a letter by Vermeer, a true master. And on the right is a forgery. Woman reading music. Which fooled experts into believing it was a priceless original. Early in my career, I became fascinated with such deceptions. Eventually, I developed scanning software that could detect fakes with unparalleled accuracy. Is that how you made enough money to buy your way onto the Odyssey? Oh, no. I made my real fortune later. Why do you keep the forgery? I've always enjoyed studying the two side by side. Both painters capture light, color, and perspective. But what makes one a masterpiece and the other simply an imitation? The forgery looks... sharper? Good eye. The details are crisp. The contrast bold. It tells us more. And yet, we feel less. What's in the letter? Who can say? What does the painting tell you? She's... concerned? Whatever's written in the letter troubles her? A burden she can't put down. Fascinating. Why go through so much effort to make a fake masterpiece? The forger initially painted under his own name, but found little success. His work was considered unremarkable. But when he took on the guise of Vermeer, suddenly it was celebrated as extraordinary. But it was a lie. And he knew it. Sometimes we struggle to glean what is real and imagined, even within ourselves. The irony of these two is that Vermeer died in obscurity. He had no idea his work would become some of the most precious, most copied, most preserved pieces in all history. Sag. Big Sag. Selene and Endymion. She's the goddess of the moon. Whereas he's a simple shepherd. Beside her is the god of love, Cupid. So she's sneaking up on him? More like visiting him in secret. The torch that Cupid bears represents Selene's undying infatuation with him. Though the two must remain apart, her love will forever burn. And why can't Selene and Endymion be together? 
Selene took a vow of chastity, promising to never take a lover. So when she fell in love with Endymion, she could only visit him at night while he slept. But then wouldn't she be breaking that vow? Think of it as a forbidden love. Though circumstance keeps them apart, still they find a way to come together, however briefly. Aren't Selene and Endymion cold? <laughs> Perhaps we should move on to another piece. <laughs> Shall we move on? Oh, that's funny. This is Rembrandt painting Jeremiah, a man in mourning. Mourning what? His home. The ancient city of Jerusalem. He foresaw its impending doom, but could do nothing to prevent it. So instead, he saved its treasures from destruction, just as I saved these works. You could say we're kindred spirits. You could, but uh, that'd be giving yourself very high praise there, wouldn't it, Tilda? About Jeremiah. If he knew his home would be destroyed, why didn't he save the people? Why save those relics? He tried. But no one would listen to his warning, so he saved what he could. But how did he know? He was a prophet. He saw an army invade and destroy the city in a vision. So it's more like he calculated which side would win a battle. What matters is that he was right in the end. If not for him, all those wonders would have been lost forever. At least this way, some part of his world survived. You know what I like the most about this piece? Even though he's the sole survivor, his home in ruins, left with only the remnants of his world. The light keeps the shadows at bay. There's still hope. Precisely. Take as long as you like. A portrait of the painter, Rembrandt's son Titus, depicted in the habit of a monk. I don't get it. Why would someone like you, with infinite resources, care about this painting of... a boy in a hood? It's not the image itself, but the feeling it conveys. The face is bright and defined, but his eyes are downcast, heavy with misfortune. And the background seems to swallow all light. The painting is infused with a sense of loss. I guess I understand how the painter feels. Works of art such as these can often cause us to look inwards at our own lives. I'm sorry about your friend. Had I been able to intervene, I would have. You literally did intervene, the just... The risk of losing you as well was too Seconds great. too late. Everything went by in a blur. I couldn't get to him. You know, long before holograms and focus recordings, People relied on art to memorialize their loved ones. Because of works like this painting, their lives are immortalized. Man, Zoe's gonna be so sad. I don't buy that she couldn't have done anything. Like, she literally did do something seconds later. She could have just done it seconds earlier, right? Like... Ugh. Rembrandt had four children by his wife. All but Titus died shortly after she gave birth to them. She passed not long after that. Titus became the only family Rembrandt had. Which is why he painted him this way. Indeed. Then tragedy struck again. Disease claimed Titus at 26. <laughs> it's almost as if Rembrandt painted the future, closing in on him. Yikes. Rembrandt actually painted several portraits of Titus, but this one has always been my favorite. It's honest. What do you mean? In others, Titus was portrayed in brighter, livelier states, but here, Rembrandt allows himself to express his true feelings. Sorrow, fear, hope, love laid bare on canvas for all time. I see this one resonates deeply with you.
Holy shit. Hello, that's a big one. Rembrandt's The Night Watch, by far the most famous painting my homeland ever produced. It was commissioned to honor a militia made up of influential citizens. I guess you must have been an influential citizen. In my day. But not as influential as you've been in this new world. I can't believe that this is all optional, man. The militia. They look disorganized. Where others painted such scenes in a stiff and stationary manner, Rembrandt chose to show them in action, preparing to march. He wanted them to feel alive. You can almost hear the commotion. Who's the girl in the painting? She's a strange one, isn't she? Bathed in light, though no one is paying attention to her. Many believe she's a symbol of the militia. A physical manifestation of their spirit, if you will. But she's not real? What's real in a painting? She's meant to represent the militia's virtue and victory. But I like to think they underestimate her. She looks as if she's seen something. What does she know? What secrets does she keep? There's so much detail to take in, isn't there? It's actually slightly depressing that I know there'd be a lot of people that just like, Ah, look at the paintings, it's optional. Skip. <laughs> just run straight up there, like... You learn so much about Tilda and stuff just from hearing what she has to say about these, you know? The Gust. By Willem van de Velde. The most famous of his many maritime paintings. A ship crossing into the unknown. I guess you're familiar with that. Indeed, which is why I appreciate this composition in particular. Though waves and wind threaten to destroy the ship, it perseveres, clinging to the light even as darkness closes in all around it. Where is the ship going? To a faraway land, most likely. My ancestors used ships like these to explore the world, sometimes at great cost. What were they looking for? Anything of value. They were traders willing to face unknown dangers to make their fortunes. But no matter how far they went, they always turned their sails home. So this... Von de Velde only painted ships? It was his specialty. Following in the footsteps of his father, Willem the Elder. The two had quite a journey of their own, taking them all the way to the court of a foreign kingdom. Did they ever come home? No. But eventually their lives worked it. Take your time. Man, that was really good. Very insightful. What's this? Stunning, isn't it? Whoops. Paintings weren't the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Van Vianen's leaded ewer, molded from a single sheet of silver. What was it for? How like Elizabeth you are. <laughs> Function over form. Its practical purpose was less important than its meaning. Von Vianen created it in honor of his late brother, who himself was a famous silversmith. A memorial? Yes. Such beauty from sorrow. If this ewer was a memorial, how did you end up with it? As the pharaoh's swarm closed in, my homeland's greatest museum gave it to me along with many other works, in the hope that I could preserve them. A masterpiece like this was too important to lose to history. I even considered bringing it with me off-world to ensure its safety. Why didn't you? I took a calculated risk. This vault seemed more secure than the unknowns of space. Besides, I thought someday I might return. A long life, after all, has its advantages. Wait, that implies... Lo and behold, here I am. That implies that she knew she was going to become immortal before she left on the journey. She thought she'd return here. 
So immortality was something they came up with before the Pharaoh plague? Huh. Exquisite, isn't it? Now that is curious. Anything in here? Nah. Nah. Alright, let's chat. There you are. Feeling better? How did you find us at the cauldron? And what did you do to everyone right before I passed out? All business, I see. Well, suffice it to say we were keeping a very close eye on Hephaestus, knowing we would need it at some point. Your ruse didn't fool us, and as for my little trick, it was an overload of the senses, accompanied by an energy discharge. Gerard and Eric were only momentarily disoriented due to their shields, but it it rendered you unconscious while I got you out. Perhaps some breakfast might steady you a bit? Oh, very posh. This was your house. The one you recreated for Beta. In the data channel you shared. How perceptive of you. Please, this way. After everything your people have done? You think I'm just gonna sit down and have a chat with you? They're not my people. They never were, and especially not now. <laughs> yeah, now you've betrayed them. Don't think they're gonna into space with them. Welcome you back. And live with them for a thousand years before coming back. So what made you suddenly turn on them? Quite simply, this. What is it? Focus. Oh, it's ours? You repaired it? But that means you've seen incredible things. What you've accomplished in two decades of life thousand years at my back and I haven't even come close. I'm sorry if I invaded your privacy, but I had to. In order to understand. To be enlightened. You truly are Elizabeth's blood. With her drive, her sense of mission, her integrity. Watching all this shamed me for the company that I've kept. Having seen it, all I want is to help you. Even if it means stopping your friends? Especially so. Please, sit down. <sighs> I don't know, man. I want to trust her. Like, she seems nice, but... There's got to be something in it for her, right? And it may be bad for us, whatever yeah. it is. That's better. Now... Can you drink you through your shield? You must and Gaia at all costs. By now you must know that Gerard intends to use Gaia to reboot the Earth's biosphere. Huh, how did that shield work? Remaking this world to specifications if she can that drink would through it. only suit us immortals. This process will kill every living thing on the planet. Yeah, we're aware. <laughs> he calls it a clean install. Not if I stop him first. Not if we do. And once he and the others are gone, we can work together to fulfill Elizabeth's dream. I'm sure Beta told you that there's a build of the Apollo database on board our ship. Yeah. A complete collection of human knowledge. With that and Gaia, we could do everything Elizabeth wanted. Heal the biosphere, educate the people of this world, uplift them. Create the world she imagined. That's 
not get ahead of ourselves. From what I've seen, your friends are invincible. From what you've seen, they can be destroyed. You've seen... And they're not invincible. In fact, a friend of yours has found a way to defeat them. Silence. Oh. He's been a busy bee, building an army powerful enough to crash through Gerard's precious base. Yeah. Regala and her rebels. Ah. Even now she's preparing a final march on the Tanakh capital. When she wins, she'll have the entire tribe under her control. She won't win. We're not going to let that happen. Of warriors and machines to throw at the base. She's been duped. They'll all perish, of course. But it should be enough to break Gerard's defenses and allow Silence to kill him. Who is Gerard? All the others. Why is Gerard in charge? We've never heard of Gerard. Defend. Yes, he's found a way to circumvent our shields. Truly an exceptional man. He's planned for everything. Except you and me. You see, while his army is battering down Gerard's doors, you and I will sneak in through a back way. One that only I know about. While Silence and my friends are busy battling each other, we'll take back Beta and Gaia. I told you I want to help you. I mean it. Man, I just don't know why she would do this. Like, she's like, oh yeah, I read your focus and you're really cool, yo. And I want to help. And it's like, okay, but like... I don't know, man. I don't know. There's got to be something more in it for her. My old focus. How did you find it, let alone repair it? When we encountered you at the Hades Proving Lab, Gerard saw you as a redundancy. I knew better. You were a revelation. After your dramatic escape, bravo, by the way. Gerard and Eric assumed you were dead and gave up the hunt. I wasn't so sure. When the others were busy, I returned to the lab and searched for any trace of you. That's when I found this little treasure. Not easy to repair, but certainly worth the effort. As I watched your life unfold, you were like a splash of color on a worn canvas. What Liz was, and more. Did you show it to the others? Of course not. It was your actions that inspired me to defy them. It's worth noting that if I hadn't found it and watched its contents, I wouldn't have known to save you at the cauldron. You'd be dead. So I should be grateful? Yes. <laughs> like, like. Definitely should be grateful to someone saving your life. <laughs> you know? So you know all about me. What about you? What would you like to know? Fucking everything. Start with your life on Earth. When I was eight... Terrorists flooded my home city. Thousands drowned, my parents included. I was one of the few who survived. My guardian sent me to boarding school. Among my peers, I was the strange girl, the orphan to be avoided. All because of circumstances beyond my control. Oh. So we're a lot alike, huh? <laughs> You were an outcast, but you didn't let that stop you from getting what you needed. Neither did I. I climbed my way out of desolation and used my wits to build a fortune. First from the technical analysis of art and the detection of forgeries. Profitable expertise in those days. But as it turned out, the software I developed was even more useful for counterintelligence. From there, it was only a short step to gathering extremely valuable intelligence on my own. You were a spy? More like a service one could turn to for information. I had to remain anonymous, of course, to protect my privacy. But despite that anonymity, Far Zenith inevitably sought me out. Hmm. Joining them? What happened when Farzinath approached you? 
they painted an irresistible vision of humanity's future. One where we need not fear illness or death, where we explored the furthest reaches of the stars and thrived. It was only later that I realized that they only intended to bequeath this future to the rich and powerful. By the time I finally figured it out, the walls were closing in, Faro's machines were devouring the Earth. So I accepted Farzenith's invitation to a birth on the Odyssey. I wanted Liz to come, but she had nobler plans, as you well know. And the other Zeniths? So you didn't know the other Zeniths were monsters until it was too late? I, I knew some of them were. Certainly, it, it wasn't until we were off planet that I understood the true scope of their greed. I was grateful to simply be alive, but the others became obsessed with a kind of effortless immortality. They built a colony where machines serviced their every need, where any memory or fantasy could be endlessly savored in virtual reality. It wasn't life. It was stultifying, a pampered dream state. As the decades passed, I withdrew more and more, alone yet again, but this time with eons to consider my mistakes. Now, finally, having met you, I feel like I have a second chance. I'm starting to believe to her. What? Help you, of course. To fulfill Liz's dream, which isn't so different from Farzina's original vision. A better future for humanity. Oh, I'm starting to believe her, but I don't know. I don't know. You said Beta is not in urgent danger. So what are the Zeniths doing to her? Putting her to work. Merging Hephaestus with Gaia. A difficult, time-consuming task, as I'm sure you know. They will compel her if need be. But her life is not in danger. She's the only one who can do it. Because you people made her to be nothing but a tool. Gerard's idea, not mine. Who is Gerard? Please, please, God, <laughs> someone fill me in on Gerard. Suspicion when I attempted any form of kindness towards her. That's why I created the data channel. A virtual place where we could speak in peace. And why did you stop using the data channel? So this channel you shared with Beta, none of the other Zeniths ever found out about it. Gerard believes he's the most cunning of all of us. Even after a thousand years, he still can't imagine that I would outwit him. The channel allowed me to interact with Beta away from their mistrustful eyes. It offered us a chance to be ourselves. Until you cut off all contact. Yes, though it pained me. I was worried that our meetings would do her more harm than good. Well, she felt like you tossed her aside. I was afraid the others would find out and punish her. She may not have had the comforts of friendship anymore, but at least I ensured she was safe. I know mm. it seems harsh, but you must believe that her well-being has always been paramount to me. Why did you make the data channel look like this place? I built this house as a shelter to weather any storm, a safe place. Not just for me, but for the art stored below. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Veda to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. I she really want to believe her, man. Even more than I did. I really want to believe her. I really do. Beta told me your colony was destroyed. That you came back to Earth because you had nowhere else to go. It's true. After we reached our destination, a planet in the Sirius star system, we spent decades building a new home. The physical constraints of Earth, the boundaries of mortality, gone. 
think of what we could have done with it. It might have been a utopia. Instead, we stagnated, absorbed in effortless comforts and virtual realities. It took a cataclysm to finally yank us out of our stupor. What happened? A massive geological event. We knew of instabilities in the planet core, but we underestimated them. By the time the collapse was upon us, it was too late to stop it. Only a few of us made it to the ship in time. We set course for Earth, the only safe harbor left to us. Which you decided to make unsafe for anyone else. Not me, Gerard. He believes it's better to wipe the canvas clean than work around the smudges. No more primitive tribes, no more combat machines, only a blank slate to do with as he pleases. But we will stop him. All we have to do is get into that base. I really feel like there's got to be something about Gerard. Like, they are deliberately not giving us any information about him, like, any real information, other than that he's a dick. But, like, he's their leader. He must have been important. Like, he's the he's the big dude in charge, so he had to have importance in the old world for him to reach that position. And we've learned, obviously, we're learning now a ton about Tilda. We've learned about Eric, not as much as Tilda, but we've learned about who he was in the past and how the other tribes, like, look up to him and everything. But we've learned nothing about Gerard, who is the most important one. So there has to be a reason, right? That he must have been... Someone important? I don't know. I don't know what them... There must be some kind of twist related to him that is the reason that they're hiding any information about him. If there isn't, then that's just like, what are they doing? Why would they not just give us like, oh yeah, he was this dude, and he did this, and this is why he's in charge. Like, if there isn't anything more to it, then why are they giving us information about everyone else and hiding it about him? So I feel like there has to be. What exactly is your plan to sneak into the Zenith base? We will make use of a lesson I learned from an early age. Always know your exits. In this case, a place where Gerard's new construction meets the ancient foundation, a passage that only I can access. When Silence flings his army at the base, we will enter through this back door, bypassing most of the fighting. The distraction will provide us with a window in which to rescue Beta and Gaia. Okay. Once we're inside the base, where will we find Beta and Gaia? Here in the command center. By then, Gaia will have been reunited with all of its subordinate functions, including Hephaestus. What about the Alpha build of Apollo on your ship? A simple matter of recovery once the others have been dealt with. Oh my god, are we going to go to the ship? We'll have everything we We're going to go to the ship! Work. We're going to go to the ship to get Apollo! We're actually going to do it! We're actually going to go into space. How do you know about Silence's plan? He isn't the only one adept at spyware. You hacked his focus? No, he's too careful for that. But his subordinates? <laughs> Not so much. He gave additional focuses to the tribals he branded the Sons of Prometheus. The ones working with Regala. By tapping their focuses, I learned about most of his dealings. The distribution of override technology, the arming of Tanakh rebels, and the secret pact with Regala to attack Gerard's base. But how did he come up with a weapon that can take down your shields? That's the one thing I haven't been able to figure out, but however he did it, I'm quite certain it will work. With it in the Tanakh army, victory seems to be within his grasp. Such a shame he'll be disappointed. Hmm. Hmm. I call bullshit. I call bullshit. Maybe she gave him the technology to break the shields. I don't believe that. She, she seemed like she was lying there. Regala's only interested in killing Hikaru and waging war on the Karja. What does she have to gain by attacking Zenith? It's the price she must pay for her war. Without the ability to override machines, her little rebellion would have languished in the desert. So she trades with the sons of Prometheus. Machines to help her overthrow Hikaru. In exchange for an assault on the base. 
pride has deluded her into thinking she can actually survive such a battle. And all without ever knowing who the sons of Prometheus really answer to. Yet for all of Silence's brilliance, still he underestimates you. That blind spot is what will allow us to take Beta and Gaia right out from under him. While hundreds of Tanakh are cut down outside. Yeah, we gotta we gotta do something about that. <laughs> it's funny if uh, if Silence had been alive back in back in the day, back it back when all the shit was going down, he'd have probably made for a good Far Zenith candidate, wouldn't he? <laughs> I can totally see him like becoming in a power, getting himself into a powerful position as he has now, where he gets himself an invite and then fucking secrets of immortality sign him right up. And you know, I feel like he would have made a good Far Zenith, as it were. So you knew Elizabeth. What was she like? Liz was everything she was. I see in you. And more. Your ingenuity, your determination, your moral compass. You've managed to distill her greatest qualities and make them your own. I'm not asking about me. Tell me about Elizabeth. What was she really like? The honest answer is that I don't actually know. For all the time that I spent with her, she always kept a part of herself locked away. It was like that from the moment we met. How did you meet? So when you met Elizabeth, she was what? Distant? Aloof? Not aloof. Not exactly. It was a summit in Paris about machine learning, a touchy subject in those days, because regulatory authorities were just starting to clamp down on AIs. Liz gave the keynote address. She had already achieved great renown for her work in automated environmental reclamation, but in her address, she was just starting to imagine the next step, an AI-driven system that wouldn't just act on its programming, but actually take responsibility for its sphere of influence. To care about life, not just follow orders. Revolutionary stuff. I was fascinated. And I wanted to meet her for a long time. I watched her after her talk. She had spoken with such moral authority, such empathy. But after that, she retreated. I could tell she felt uncomfortable with all of her admirers. It was as if giving the talk had cost her something. I didn't want to be a pest, so I planned my approach carefully. And? So how did you finally approach Elizabeth after her talk? I picked the right moment. The morning of the next day, right as she came back to the conference, she had just had her coffee. She was fresh, rested. It was like she had braced herself for the onslaught of colleagues. I asked if I could walk with her, then put forth a question about her talk that I thought was intelligent. Her answer made me realize it wasn't, but she was very welcoming, almost as if we were previously acquainted. It was only halfway through the conversation that I realized she knew exactly who I was. It was quite a shock to me. My business was trafficking in secrets and I took great pains to protect my anonymity. So that was Liz, perpetually one step ahead. I came to view our meeting as a metaphor for our friendship. She always seemed to know me far better than I knew her. I guess I know the feeling. Man, this has been fantastic. And I'm very glad that I've managed to click all of them. I was, <laughs> I'm in perpetual fucking terror of accidentally clicking the end conversation button before I have listened to everything else. <laughs> like, because that's happened a few times that I've clicked, like, the wrong spoke on the wheel, as it were. And uh, if that had happened in this conversation, and if the wrong spoke had happened to be the end conversation button, I think I would have fucking cried. So I'm glad we managed that. First far off. 
Now Hikaru or in the Tanakhs. Your plan would wipe out an entire tribe. There has to be another way. We are in an admittedly desperate situation, but I assure you there isn't. Remember Zero Dawn. Elizabeth's sacrifice. Sometimes many have to die for a new world to grow. If it looks impossible, look deeper. Wait. The data channel. It still exists, doesn't it? I need you to open it. Let me talk to Beta. Impossible. We might be detected. It's worth the risk. There is another way, one where the Tanakhs survive. But we won't. If the others... If you want to help, open it. <laughs> you tell her, Aloy. What are they doing to her? Virtual reality dissociation. The manual merge of Hephaestus will take hours upon hours of tedious micromanagement. If she resists the work, they run simulations to induce feelings of isolation and despair. Beta, can you hear me? Watching me. I, I, I can't hold it this extra protection for long. You should have killed me. No. No, look at me. I'm coming for you. I promise. Whoa. <laughs> she whispering then I think it can be done I'll contact again when it's time Ooh. hold on as long as I know you're coming for me I can endure anything oh Tilda's not in the know and neither are we all right. I did as you asked. Now I think you need to tell me what you're planning. I'm going to take Silent's army away. I don't need it. Only the weapon he made to penetrate your shields. And how do you propose to get it? Ask him nicely? Without Regala and her rebels, he won't have a choice. We'll be his only option. Only option for what? What did you tell her? is between me and my sister. We'll be Silent's only option for crashing that base. I'll tell you the rest later. But first, there are a couple of things I have to do. Oh. And what are those? Lay my friend to rest. And then I'm going to use the override that Beta gave me at Gemini to put an end to Regal's rebellion. From the air. Wait. Since you insist on doing things your way, I know of something that will truly help you make a grand entrance with the Tanakh. The ancient Horus Titans still possess electromagnetic energy cells as part of their arsenal. Drop one of those on Regala's army and they'll receive quite a surprise. So go, do what you must. I'll come to your base if you manage to bring silence to the table. Not if. When.
All that remains complete. Aloy. Aloy, is that really you? Yeah, it's, it's me. Where's everyone else? We're all... At, we're, we're back at base. What happened? It... It might be easier to explain in person. I'll try to join you there when I can. Okay. I, we'll wait here for you. It's good to hear your voice, Aloy. Wait, I remember this place. This place was the place with the fucking annoying thing to get to, like, in here, wasn't it? I think it was in there. Yeah, and I went down to this door and I was like, how do you open this door? And I couldn't. And that's the art place. Huh. That's funny. That is quite funny. Anyone who was watching this, who, at that episode, who had already got this far in their own playthrough, <laughs> must have been like, ha! He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Just to let you know, I'm now patched into your focus network. Great. I take it the other Zenus can't hear us? Of course not. And they don't know about your base either, in case you were wondering. I've sent you data on the Horus energy cells you can use against Regala's forces. Reach out to me when you're ready to acquire one. Understood. All right. Oh, hello. Uh, all FAS bought seven Horus combat platforms included EMP cells as part of their arsenals. Right, so we're going to be taking away their ability to use machines. Acquiring and deploying one shouldn't be difficult, but we'll get to that in a moment. The bigger issue is activation. Barring extraordinary circumstances, such as interference from Hades, as you experienced last year, all Horus munitions are inert, deactivated by Minerva's decryption regime during the 21st and 22nd centuries. To render these EMPs operational, we'll have to skirt those efforts. I've devised a way to do so without causing unwanted repercussions. A bespoke code signal that should enable all and only such devices in the vicinity. I've transferred it to your focus. All you have to do now is send it out. A Zero Dawn communications relay should do the trick. I believe you refer to them as Toolnecks. I've chosen one for you that is centrally located, now marked in your HUD. Ah! We're going to be finally fucking getting the one next to Scalding Spear. That we tried to get maybe 40 hours ago or some shit. Uh, simply override it as you would normally, and my signal will automatically transmit. Every EMP on every Horus within a 500 kilometer radius should come online. On to acquisition and deployment. Horus units manufactured EMPs in their fabrication bays, then subsequently loaded them onto their multi-purpose appendages, or tentacles, if you like. Because the cells were designed to be detachable, enabling them to be fired or thrown at enemy forces, their fittings should be quite light. The only way to attain them will be through the air, but it sounds like you already have that covered. Are we really going to be flying? Are we going to override... Uh, like flying machines, like Sunwings or something? Is I guess that's what Beta handed over. We saw her hand over a bird thing. Uh, when you reach one, it should come loose with a hardy yank, rust, rust or corrosion notwithstanding. There is no need to prime the cell, as they're designed to trigger on impact. Once you have one, all you need to do is drop it in the target area. I'm sure Rakala and her minions will enjoy the experience. All the best. Tilda. Wow. Thonk. The wings of the ten. I knew it. I knew we were going to get flying. Because then we'll be able to do the other quests and they'll require flying too. Aloy has a plan to end Regala's rebellion, defeat the Zeniths, and rescue Beta and Gaia. But first she must reunite with her companions and lay a dear friend to rest. That is what we will be doing in the next part. What a fantastic section this was. Oh my god, this is what I fucking live for. <laughs> this is the shit I fucking adore. Just Gotta brace myself against this wind. Indeed. Long conversations with fucking very interesting people. Revealing tons of lore and information and details about the world. Fantastic. Fantastic. Loved it. Loved it. Cannot wait. Cannot wait to see where we go from here. Seems like we're going to be taking down Regala and then taking the fight to Far Zenith. But I just... Oh man, I just don't know what the setup for Game 3 is going to be. I feel like we're going to fail to take out Far Zenith. Because like... What the fuck is the third game going to be? If... If... She's... Gaia has now merged with Hephaestus. So... Gaia is now in control of the machines. Or will be, once the merge completes. And so, like, things shouldn't be an issue anymore. 
with machines, but like something is going to go wrong there because there's no way that machines are not still an enemy in the third game. And then the far zenith lot, I feel like it's too much. I feel like it's too much to hope for that we just wander in and take them out and that's going to be job done kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, maybe Tilda turns against us. I, I want to trust her. I really like her. Fantastic character so far. But uh, yeah, and, and information about Gerard. Who is he? Why is he in charge? How, like, there's so much still to learn. We'll see. We'll see. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, if you could leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the videos around. Share the playlist around if you can. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time for more Horizon Forbidden West. Thanks for watching. See you then.